no. Please don't make me do this. Please, I have a family. I see. It is what you command, bookshelf. Well, that was dramatic. Hello, everybody. My name is Tyler, and I kind of have a special, interesting video for you guys today. I've actually kind of technically done this video twice already. I did it over a year ago now in a video called My Bookshelf Tour, which I went back and rewatched in preparation for making a video like this, and it's just like a terrible video. I know we're supposed to go back and laugh at the stuff we've made, but my audio was out of sync. I, I think the setup was really weird. There was even this pause, like a half a second pause at the beginning where I'm kind of like, going like that at the beginning because I forgot to cut it. And I also then made another video like this called My Classic Literature Collection where I kind of set up my bookshelf in a very similar position and then just talked about all the classic literature books that I own. The reason why I want to make a video like this today where I go through all the books that I own and kind of get a collective bookshelf tour going is because I made that first bookshelf tour when I had about 150 subscribers. So not a lot of people knew who I was, knew what my mentality was with buying books. And then when I made my My Classic Literature collection video, I had less than 1,000 subscribers. And right now at the time of recording this, I think we're sitting at a little under 19,000 subscribers, which is fucking absurd. That's too many people in the planet who know who I am and who are watching my videos. So real quick, just Thank you guys for all the support you've been showing me, subscribing, liking, commenting, everything. It's been really just like the greatest thing ever. Uh, being able to talk about books with you guys is just the most entertaining thing possible. But I kind of realized when making those old videos, one, I look drastically different than I do now. I got facial hair. I got a mustache. I have long, flowing, beautiful, golden brown locks. And I thought, you know what? The biggest thing that has also changed about myself is I have gotten a lot of books, a fuck ton of books. I have bought way too many books for my own good. Okay, hey guys, editing Tyler here. Uh, I bought more books. Uh, someone sent me a link to like a Harvard book sale and I went and bought 13 more books. So, you know, the addiction keeps going. All right, back to the video. I have bankrupted myself. I have spent too much money on books. And the book collection that you guys saw in not only my first video, but my classic literature collection video about 11 months ago now, I just have more books. And I kind of want to share them with you guys because you guys are always giving me great recommendations. And my goal with this is to make this type of video once every few years. So we kind of view how my collection has changed and shifted because I kind of think that's representative of my personality. Like I've dived clearly headfirst into NYRBs, which are this like really great contemporary classics. And I know it's not the only type of book out there with N NYRB, but I think this is pretty representative of who I'm becoming as a reader. And I thought this would be a really, really fun thing to share. So, because I'm going to have to go through about 200 books here, and I think it's almost 200 books, and it's really fucking hot in LA, and I'm out of clean clothes, I am going to try to run through this video as fast as I can because I'm a ticking time bomb of sweat, I'm a ticking time bomb of I have to go to the bathroom, and I'm a ticking time bomb of... God, I'm tired, and <laughs> I've talked a lot in the last few days. Uh, but I figured this would be a long video. We can kind of sit back, relax, enjoy, and you guys can sit here and listen to me ramble about all the wonderful books that I own. And maybe there's something here that you don't have, and it sounds interesting, and you want to get it, and therefore we can talk about it. Or you're like, oh, crap, Tyler, you like books by J.R. Ackerley? Why don't you go check out these books? And we can kind of have this wonderful dichotomy of recommending books and buying books and creating our own little colorless wonderland ecosystem, uh, which I guess is just another word for a cult. Uh, so maybe we're the colorless wonderland cult. I'm cool with being a cult leader. I think I'm there emotionally. I mean, isn't that what like a really cool teacher is? Just like a low key kind of cult leader. Is that a hot take? I think it's a hot take. So a little bit about my book buying philosophy and how I buy books. I'll, I'll be really quick on this one, but as a white male, I am very limited in the socio-cultural perspective in which I can view the world. There are only so many few limited diverse experiences in which I can view the world from. And in my mind, literature and being able to understand diverse perspectives, whether it's through a women's author or a black author or a trans author or a gay author or a Native American author, Hispanic author, anything, being able to view books from those lens and being able to view their understanding understanding of the world and their circumstances helps me become a better person, it helps me become more empathetic, see more of the world that I'm not able to through my very limited lens. I, I think I do have a limited lens because of my upbringing. And reading allows me to kind of open up and to engage in these kind of diverse experiences that I would not be able to 
on my own. And that's why I love literature. You'll see a bunch of different books here from different types of authors, and I just think it's something that I love, and I love sharing, and I love reading, and I love talking about. But enough kind of rambling, let's get to the first few books in here. So I'll probably go shelf by shelf. There's absolutely zero organization. If I like to live my life by any way, it's absolute chaos. Nonfiction books are scattered throughout with fiction books. I try to organize somewhat, but alas, as you'll see as we get into the lower shelves, that it kind of falls apart completely. But... I'm gonna have to also probably just huck my books over there because I've set up a few blankets because trying to put books back into tight bookshelves with only one hand is fucking impossible. So I'm gonna have to like go, this is a book, wah, and throw it over in the corner over there. So I promise my books will be okay. I don't really care if they get battered or beat it up uh, and that's okay with me. So enough rambling, let's get to the first book. I really fucking hate this bookshelf because of the little tiny lips that are in the corner right here. If you take one book off, they fall down and then just do a flip and fall off. And it's just such a pain in the ass. The first book that I have is Henry Green's Back. Uh, I did not buy this on my own. I actually signed up for something called NYRB's Book Club. And every month since I signed up, they just sent me a random book from their collection. So this is one of the books that I got, I think a few months ago. It sounds really interesting. It has a really cool cover, uh, but these are definitely books that I don't think I would buy conventionally on my own, uh, considering how small they are. Uh, but this is definitely one of those things that I'm kind of excited to make a video about a book club and I'll probably just read all the books that they sent me and kind of give a discussion about that. But yeah, Henry Green's back. The next book that I have is The Expendable Man by Dorothy B. Hughes. Uh, I was kind of interested in non-conventional fiction books that NYRB has. So this one is a crime thriller. And I bought this because I didn't know they made kind of like mystery books like this. And I was browsing uh, my Barnes & Noble and I was in the mystery and thriller section. And I found an NYRB in there and was like... Uh, Absolutely, I trust these unequivocally, so I bought it, and I haven't read it yet, but, I mean, as you'll probably see with the common trend here, I'm really excited to read it. All books on my shelf are books that I would read, so this will be read one day. Actually, this might be read really soon. I've been reading women's literature for the past month, uh, and only women's literature, so this could be an interesting, like, crime thriller women's literature element to talk about. This might be read soon, actually. The next book that I have is one that I actually completely forgot that I own, and it's J.G. Farrell's uh, The Siege of Krishnapur. Uh, I don't know why I bought this. I went to the Iliad bookstore in Los Angeles, one of my first few kind of days here because I heard so much about it. And I found this book and it was an NYRB for like five bucks. So I bought it instantly. Um, I really don't know why I bought it. I think I just bought it because it's NYRB. Uh, I guess I'm a slut for these. So that's one of my books. The next book that we have is The Dead Avocado by Elaine Dunby. I fucking love this book so much, as you can see from my notes. It's about a young woman kind of finding her identity in European countries. We see this wonderful mix of feminist humor, feminist understanding of the world, and we see this wonderful, wonderful perspective from a girl trying to kind of break away from societal conventions and find her place in society. And being a lover of women's literature, this was just right up my alley. Uh, Elaine Dunby's really great, and this is a really great book by her. The next book that I have is Peach Blossom Paradise by Guy Fay, uh, arguably one of my favorite looking NYRBs. This is also one of these books that I see myself reading this summer because it's kind of just been sitting there, and there's something really appealing about the spine here. I want to give you guys a better look, but the pink color with like the black font and the red name just kind of like fit together, and it honestly kind of stands out on my shelf, so I could really see myself reading this, but this is just like a beautiful book cover. Like, this book cover is just gorgeous. Let me just show that to you there. Yeah, I absolutely am kind of, like, enamored by just the cover of this book. And also, it's a Chinese literature book, which I'm not super familiar with, so that would make it really good reading. The next two books we have are two by J.R. Ackerley. Uh, the first one is We Think the World of You, a, a gay romance story uh, kind of set in, like, 20th century England. It's kind of an interesting perspective because a lot of the book deals with the kind of reflections of these two guys and their kind of forbidden love at the time through the relationship between one of the guys and the other guy's dog, which makes it really, really interesting. And I know that kind of sounds like it's like a book about bestiality, and I promise it's not. Um, it's definitely a book about like love and love lost and connections and the connections that this guy develops with this dog considering this dog is also kind of like in captivity when he first finds it it's just like a really great book i talk about this book extensively and i try to read all the books on my bookshelf videos so if you want to know more you can go check it out there the other book that i bought by J.R. ackerley is something called my father and myself which deals a lot with the relationship between 
J.R. Ackerley and his father, which in my journey to read more nonfiction books, uh, specifically, I think I'm going to be tackling memoirs more often, thanks to your recommendations uh, in that nonfiction video. Uh, this is something that I'm actually really interested in, and I'll definitely be reading this year. The next book that I have here is Gold by Rumi, uh, a book of poetry that the NYRB collection sent me. Then we have John William Stoner, one of my favorite books of all time, a book that made me feel some type of way about just everything. It's one of the few books in my life that's ever impacted me so emotionally that it nearly brought me to tears in some section. It's one of the most impactful books I've ever read, and I cannot recommend this enough to more people. I made an entire video about it, and I'd highly, highly recommend it. The next book that I have is something called The Strudelhof Steps. Uh, I bought it because in the back it takes place in Vienna, and I have a tattoo about the song Vienna by Billy Joel, so it felt kind of like like fate that I would actually buy and read this book, but alas, like many other things I have on this bookshelf, I have not read it, but I will one day. It's a book I'm really interested in. Then I have the book Eve Babbitt's Hollywood, a book that I actually just finished and will be talked about more and in my upcoming video about women's literature, so I don't want to spoil too much here. The next book that I have here is Nightmare Alley by William Lindsay Gresham, a book that was turned into a movie recently directed by Guillermo del Toro starring Bradley Cooper, but it was also made in a movie in the 1930s. Uh, apparently this book is really interesting. Uh, all of my partner has read this and read some of it and has some thoughts about it. She absolutely adores the Nightmare Alley movie, the one that came out with Bradley Cooper. So because of that, we we're both kind of inspired to buy the book, but she's a better reader than I am. So she actually read it and now it sits here collecting dust on my shelf because I'm a loser. Then we have the book that I'm the most interested to read out of any book on my shelf, but alas, I'm scared because it's really big. Uh, and that's William Gaddis's The Recognitions. Uh, my friend Matt's bookshelf and Mark, also known as Drunzo, have both read this book. They've both said that anybody who reads this book gets something completely different out of it than everybody else. And that's the most enticing thing I've ever heard about a book. And that's my favorite thing I've ever heard about a book. I will read this one day. I will get kind of like the courage to sit down and tackle this regardless of how long it takes me. And you know, I'm excited. The next three books that I have, I don't know why I bought them. Honestly, I was just kind of in a silly goofy mood and I bought these and I don't really remember them. Uh, I have this book called Leonardo Schiazia called To Each His Own. It was $3.22, that's why I bought it. I mean, I just gotta be honest. Then I have Olivia Manning's The School for Love. Uh, I don't know why I bought this, but it was about love and romance and I'm kind of a sap for it, so I bought it. And then we have Claude Simon's Flanders Road, which is a book just sent to me by the NYRB Book Club, so I have not even looked at it yet. Uh, it looks cool. I see French army, German army, sounds exciting. <sighs> Wow, I'm not making any progress at all, and I'm already super sweaty. Uh, the This one right here is The Uncollected Essays of Elizabeth Hardwick, another book sent to me by the NYRB Collection. Then I have uh, Guy de Montpassant, I think is how you say it, like death. The next book that I have is something called Peter the Great's African Experiments in Prose, another book sent to me by the NYRB Collection that I have not read yet. I then have... This wonderful, interesting book by John Williams called Nothing But the Night, and it's basically his first book, and even on here it says, The Author of Stoner. So of course I had to buy his first book, considering how impactful Stoner was to me. And this is one of these books, it's like a hundred and something pages, and I'm kind of really excited to read it. Uh, this is something that I think I could read in like a day or two, uh, and just be super excited that I've done it. The next book that I have here is something called Paul Goodman's Growing Up Absurd. It's a book about like political thoughts, which I think is kind of interesting, uh, kind of talking about politics, which is one of my kind of interests, which I think is everybody's interest and everyone should kind of be aware of them. So it doesn't really make me special, but it kind of sounded interesting, so I bought it. Then I have this really interesting book. It's not a lot in it, but it's called uh, Notes on the Cinematograph by Robert Brisson, uh, a really famous director uh, who makes incredible movies, and uh, I just really want to see more about his thoughts. Then we get into Edith Warden's Ghost, Sylvia Townsend Warner's Lolly Willows, Eileen Chang, Naked Earth, which is a book that I read recently and will be talking about my women's literature video. We have Ross Feld's Guston in Time, Remembering Philip Guston. Um, or Guston, or however you say it. Uh, I don't know why this book was sent to me. It was an NYRB uh, one of the month, and I don't know. It's kind of an interesting one. I don't really know what to think about it, but it's like a collection of art, which I just think is kind of cool. I don't mean to sound very dismissive of it, but it definitely was one of those books. Like, I got it and was like... Uh, and like, okay, sure. Then we have The New York Stories of Henry James, a collection of short stories set in New York by the acclaimed author Henry James. Need I say more? This book is awesome. It's kind of horrifying that on my computer right here... How rude. Um, it's kind of horrifying on my computer right here how it says like 25 minutes of recording and I've technically been through like half a shelf. Uh, so I currently have three more shelves to get through. So 
I'm about to kick some fucking ass with these books. Let's do this. Okay. Whew, whew. All right. Get hyped up. All right. Let's do this. Um, the next one I have is Contempt by Alberto Moravia. They just keep falling. They just don't like me. Then I have Varieties of Exile by Mavis Gallant or Gallant. I think it's a collection of short stories. I bought it because it was like 686 and these books are expensive. Then we have Yuko Shushima's, uh, I think is how you say it, Woman Running in the Mountains, which I read and talked about in my Some Fun Recommendations book. This is my favorite one that NYRB for their book club sent me. I got this and read it like immediately. I was so interested in it. And it's a really, really great book. I'd highly recommend it. Then we have John Williams' Butcher's Crossing, a book that I, I need I say more. It's by John Williams. I'm going to read it. He's one of my favorite authors, and I've only read one of his books. It's a shame he's only made four books, too, which kind of sucks. Then I have Olivia Manning's Fortune of War, The Balkan Trilogy. I bought this because it was about, like, a teacher in education during the war in Germany, which I thought that was really interesting. Uh, it's a giant book, but I think it's actually three books built into one, so that kind of makes it a lot more tolerable. Then we have Luis Guluis. I can't say that. I'm not going to try to say that. Uh, Luis Guloy, Guloy, Guli, Blood Dark. I'm gonna butcher that one and you guys are gonna make fun of me for that. Then we have Robert Burton's The Anatomy of Melancholy, the biggest book that I own, and I own it because I had to poop. No, I will not explain more. Figure that one out on your own. <laughs> um, then we have uh, Franz G. Bengston's The Longships, a book set in like Viking era history, which is really interesting, but it these books are just falling and being rude. Uh, but it basically deals a lot with like the exploration of religion. Uh, my friend Mark, also known as Drunzo, read this book and highly recommends it. Oh my God, we're almost done with the NYRBs. This is a big iconic moment. Let's let those fall. Let's get those out of the way. Uh, then we have Susan Tobbs divorcing and Kingsley James, Kingsley James, Lucky Jim by Kingsley Amiss. And that brings us to the end of my NYRB section. Those are all the NYRB books that I own, but don't be sad, I have three more bookshelves to go through. Okay, real quick, this is my small manga collection. I have the first five volumes of Berserk and then the first two volumes of Goodnight Pun Pun. Uh, I've read the first volume of Goodnight Pun Pun. If you wanna see more of my thoughts, go follow me on Instagram. I, I can't wait to talk about this in a series, so I will not save it. So I will not, I will save it uh, for another video. Uh, then I have Kafka The Trial, which is a book that I'm very much interested in reading because I love Metamorphosis. And this is another Kafka book that I just think like reading the books of a guy like this is just wild and so much fun. Then we have Joan Didion's Run River. I'm currently reading her nonfiction memoir book, The Year of Magical Thinking, and it's heartbreaking and it's making me cry. Uh, so I'm very excited to read her first fiction book. Then we have W. Somerset Moham's The Moon and Sixpence, a, a book that I wanted to buy because I loved Of Human Bondage by him. And last but not least, we have Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. And holy fuck, we're done with the first shelf. Let's go. It's so hot in here. I wonder how many times I'm gonna have to change shirt. I've already sweat through that long sleeve one. So now I'm just gonna run through old clothes that are kind of baggy. Uh, so, you know, have fun roasting my outfit like my students do. Uh, let's see, what books do I have here? Oh, I have Jorge Luis Borges on mysticism. One of my favorite books ever. I talked about it in the most important books to me video. So if you wanna see more of my thoughts there, Go check that out. Then we have a book that I don't know why I bought. I actually have no idea why I own this. I gotta be completely honest. Seleuced, the Jugurthine War or the Conspiracy of Catiline. No idea why I bought this. None of this means anything to me. I, I'm probably gonna get rid of it. Uh, but yeah, I was in a silly, goofy mood. I was feeling the nonfiction vibe and I bought it. And it's a waste of $7 because this will go underappreciated in my very... Uh, a juvenile minds on history. We have one of the Bronte sisters and Bronte's The Tenant of Windfell Hall. We have Humphrey Cobb's Paths of Glory, made, uh, made into a movie or inspired by the movie. I'm assuming it was made into the movie, uh, Paths of Glory by Stanley Kubrick, and it's just an incredible movie. So this is probably gonna be a pretty damn good book. Then we have Kate Chapon's uh, The Awakening Selected Stories. We have Henrik Ibsen's Ghost and Other Plays. Then we have this beast of a book called Anthony Trollope's The Last Chronicle of Barset, which I think is the last book in a series of books by Anthony Trollope, which means I'm a fool for buying it because I don't think I have the other ones. All right, let's see. What do I have under here? Okay, so I have Thomas Hardy's uh, Tess of the D'Urbervilles. Uh, the reason I bought this is because uh, Margot Robbie's character buys it in uh, what's called the uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the last Quentin Tarantino movie that he made. And I was like, that sounds interesting. And that's probably a relevant literary reference on the film. And I want to know more about it because I really love that movie. And then I bought the book and haven't read it. So, you know, my research kind of went out the window there. The next book I have is Charles Dickens' The Mystery of Edwin Drood, a book that I read in college despite not having read any other uh, Dickens books. And this was the last one he wrote and didn't finish before he died, so I think it's kind of interesting. I have Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. 
Another book by Kate Chapon, uh, Bayou Folk and a Night in the Arcadia. Acadie, a Night in the Acadie. Never mind. I have Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and another Anthony Trollope book because I love Victorian lit, The Warden. Here's another book that I don't remember buying. I don't remember where I got it, and I don't remember why I got it. Uh, I don't, Montesquieu's The Persian Letters. I don't know where I got this or when it even showed up on my bookshelf. Could I have some indication? Oh, I guess I got it when I went to the Iliad. I don't remember. <laughs> That's really bad, though. I should really fix that. Uh, this is one, Lafciato Hearn, that I talked about in my nonfiction book, Scare Me, so let's fix that video. Uh, it's Writings from Japan, an anthology. Then we have Cicero's Murder Trials, a book that I started to read, uh, but then got super busy with work and could not kind of continue because it was taking a ton of time to read. In my continuous mood of silly, goofy moods of buying nonfiction books, I have Livy, The War with Hannibal. Thank you, Junzo and Matt from Matt's Bookshelf uh, for continuing to get me into nonfiction books, despite the fact that I am fully immersed in fiction right now. Uh, we have Plato's The Republic. And then we have this monster of a book, Alexi de Tocqueville's Democracy in America, a book that I actually will read before the end of the year. And you can hold me to that. If not, you can uh, you can uh, find me and punch me in the face, but only lightly because I don't have a high pain tolerance. So please be gentle. Then we have Thomas Pynchon's Vinland. Vineland, oops, sorry. George Eliot's Middlemarch. Another Anthony Trollope book, He Knew He Was Right. Edith Wharton's The House of Mirth, which I started reading when I first started dating Olive and then I completely forgot about and never went back to it. I am not a good influence for books, guys. I don't know why you listen to me. Then we have Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, a giant, really beautiful edition that I bought for like six bucks and I will read one day. All right, as you can see, I had to stack these up so they didn't fall over here. I have Livy's The Early History of Rome, Herodotus The Histories, which Mark made a video about Herodotus centered around this book. It's on his channel. You should definitely go check it out. It's like a very interesting history lesson that a teacher has gone over. So yeah, I definitely recommend this. I bought this literally because of his video. I watched his video and was like, let's fucking go. And then I immediately bought it. I'm a very good friend. I support you, Mark. The next book is The Cameron by Giovanni Boccaccio. Boccaccio? things I say it. Fanny Fern's Ruth Hall, which if it's not evident by the sheer amount of passages that have annotated it, is one of my favorite books I've ever read. I absolutely, absolutely adore it. It's just the best book ever. It deals so much with like the impacts that women had to deal with, especially kind of like looking back like a century or two. And specifically like my favorite part about this book is the witticism that uh, Ruth Hall, not Ruth Hall, Fanny Fern writes with so aware of like what women had to go through in, in such like a, a fucking great way of putting it too. Like she has such like witticism and sarcasm and everything feels so purposeful and so deliberate and I just absolutely adored it. We have Milton's Paradise Lost, a book that only reminds me of my 12th grade AP Lit class and I don't know why I bought it. We have Jane Austen, Sense and Sensibility. We have Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, which again is one of my favorite books ever. Then we have uh, Shirley Hazard's The Transit of Venus, which is interesting because Olive and I went to a bookstore one day and we're just like, hey, let's pick out a book for each other. And we did. And I think I got her George Eliot's, uh, not Donda. I don't think it's Donda. Isn't that, isn't that like a Kanye West album? <laughs> um, but yeah, I got her a George Eliot book. Is it Daniel Deronda? Denanda? I don't know, honestly. And she got me Transit of Venus, which I have not read yet, which means I'm a terrible partner. We have Nugi Watyango, uh, A Grain of Wheat. If I butchered that, I'm so sorry. I read this in college and my professor, I think, butchered the name too. So I've kind of had this association with the name that I think is just wrong. And then we have William Gaddis's JR, another book that is, I think, 700 pages of unattributed dialogue, which just scares me. Like, I'm just going to be honest, I have nightmares about this book, uh, just thinking about trying to read it and how stupid it will make me feel. Uh, the Story of the Stone, Volume 1, a book that I went out and bought with Olive and I was interested in more like Asian literature, so I bought it. George Eliot's Silas Marner. We have the portable Arthur Miller, which uh, Arthur Miller is a huge piece of shit, but he writes really well. So there's that interesting of like, you're such a bad person, but you're so talented. Like, fuck you, but also, oh, you're writing so great. Like, I know The Crucible is like a stereotypical school book, uh, a school play, sorry, but I love The Crucible a lot, actually. Sophocles' is The Three Theban Plays. Another book that I was in a silly goofy mood and have no reason why I bought this. Uh, Thucydides' The History of the Peloponnesian War. Xenophon's The Persian Expedition. Harriet Beecher Stowe, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Jane Austen's Emma. Bernal Diaz's The Conquest of New Spain. Mary Elizabeth Braddon's Lady Aldi's Secret. Then we have Philip K. Dick's The Man in the High Castle, and I'm just gonna make this as a public declaration to my audience uh, and to Matt's bookshelf. I don't care if I'm off center or out of focus right now. This is a declaration and an act of war to Matt's bookshelf. I just wanna make this very clear. I stole The Man in the High Castle from Matt's bookshelf. Do you wanna know why, guys? Do you wanna know why I stole this book from him? And this is a book that he bought 
when he was studying abroad, or maybe not studying abroad, I think this is when he was doing like a six week summer course in Oxford. And he went to a library, not a library, he went to a bookstore and bought this book. And do you wanna know why I took this book from him and I'm holding it hostage? It's because man has my fucking copy of Shogun, James Clavel's Shogun, that he's had for me for maybe five years. He refuses to admit that he has it. He refuses to accept the fact that he has my book. I know he's read it because he talks about it. I've been to his house and I've seen it, but I forgot to grab it. I now live across the country and I am unable to go get the book from his house. So this is a public declaration of war, Matthew or Matt from Matt's bookshelf. I'm gonna hold this hostage for the rest of my life until I get my copy of Shogun back. I don't even wanna read Shogun. I just want to, oh, I just want my book back. I spent like 15 bucks on that book. So I hope, thanks for like the book, I guess. This is a declaration of war, Matthew. I am calling vengeance upon you. I am Robert Pattinson from Batman. This is war. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> then we have the letters of Vincent van Gogh, the apocryphal gospels, Machado de Assis's Assis, uh, Don Casmuro. Do I own two copies of this? Are you fucking kidding me? Wait a second. No shot. Hold on. Oh my goodness. No way. Oh my god. I'm so stupid. Oh my god. No. Why is this one so much bigger? What the fuck? I had no idea I owned two copies of this book. I spent $7 on this one. Look at this. Look how much of a fool I am. Oh my god. I got to read the books that I own. Are you kidding me? Oh, damn. Crap. Okay, well, that's two copies of Machado de Assis uh, by Don Casmero. Fuck me. God damn it. <laughs> uh, then we have Emily Bronte's Weathering Heights. See, now I'm annoyed. Oliver Schreiner's The Story of an African Farm. I don't remember buying this. I, I mean, I think I bought this at the Iliad in one of my big spending sprees when I first got here. But this book looks really cool. I really love this cover. It's very peaceful for some reason. We have Homer's The Iliad. Need I say more? Oh, yeah, I do actually want to say more. I got the Robert uh, Fagel's uh, translation, which apparently is the best one. Uh, so, yeah, that's the right translation, I think. Walt Whitman, The Complete Poems. Uh, when I get into poetry one day and get over my fear of it, I will be reading Walt Whitman. Herman Melville's Moby Dick or The Whale. Gargantua and Pantagruel. Aristotle, The Athenian Constitution. Plutarch's The Rise of Rome. Amelie Zola, Nana. William Dean Howells, A Modern Instance. Hannah Arendt's On Revolution. This beautiful edition of Thomas Pynchon's Gravity Rainbow, which I will not throw on the ground, but lightly put over here because I don't want that book to get ruined. That was also a birthday gift from uh, Mark. We have Wilkie Collins' The Moonstone, which... By the way, in my bookshelf tour video I made a year ago, I, I made the mistake of saying that Wookie Collins was a woman. He's a guy. I'm correcting that now. I now know from my mistakes. The Chronicles by Frossart, I think is how you say it. Frossart? Who knows? I don't remember why I bought this. John Jack Rousseau's The Confessions. And last but not least, the two full bookshelves is Malcolm Cowley's Exile's Return, a literary's odyssey of the 1920s. I just butchered that name. Please forgive me. And I'll also be right back as I fix my camera so I can show you guys my lower two shelves. All right, we're down to the final two shelves. This video is already going to be absurdly long. I'm so sorry for the length, guys. But I hope you're enjoying it, honestly. This has been a wild journey. Can't believe I discovered I own the same book twice. Uh, we have Charles Dickens' The Great Expectations. Louisa May Alcott's Little Women. Charles Dickens' David Copperfield. I have actually no idea if I'm even framed, too. This could be really bad. Uh, the Rings of Saturn by W.G. Sebald. You'll see two more books of his uh, right here. Uh, I'll actually just go over them now. Vertigo by W.G. Sebald. And then The Emigrants by W.G. Sebald. Uh, I bought these books because they're part of one collection I found at the bookstore. And they looked really fucking cool. So I was really curious about them. And I think I'll probably make a video about them one day. Because they seem like the strangest books I've ever read. So I'm really, really excited. Then we have Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Elmans. This giant monstrous book that I think is like a thousand pages like no punctuation or something like that something absurd one of those like things that just makes the book so incredibly interesting to buy and read we have f scott fitzgerald's tales of the jazz age brett easton ellis's less than zero thomas pinchon's the crying of lot 49 willa cather's o pioneers the portrait of a lady by henry james 
Satan Tango uh, by a name I'm going to not even attempt because I'm going to 100% butcher it, but it was the winner of the Man Booker Prize, the international one, in 2015, which I think just gives it a metric shit ton of literary credibility. Then we have the short stories of Ernest Hemingway, and we have this book by Hanya Yanagahara, the author of A Little Life, called To Paradise, a book that I bought right away as soon as it became available in paperback, and I have not read it, but I am super excited for it. We're going to get a little frisky here. We're going to start in the middle with Dante's Divine Comedy, all three volumes of them in this beautiful, beautiful old Penguin Classics edition, which I absolutely adore. We have Steadhall's The Red and the Black, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, The Death of King Arthur. We have The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger, the most important book to me ever in my entire life. It's a beautiful, beautiful edition. This edition I've had since junior year of high school. I'm not even joking. Uh, I will keep this book forever and always, always have this beautiful, beautiful edition with me. Plato's The Laws, Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger, W. Somerset Moham, The Razor's Edge, George Orwell's 1984, a book that I read when I was substituting, when I was still like a freshman or junior, a freshman or sophomore in college, not a junior by that point. Uh, and I would substitute high school classes and I just let the kids do whatever the fuck they wanted because I was so engrossed in this book. Uh, I read it in like a week and it has stuck with me ever since. And it's a book that I've been dying to reread since. Uh, Natsumi Sosuke's uh, Kokoro, a book that I read recently and absolutely 100% adored. It's I'll be talking about it probably more when we get to the end of the year in terms of my favorite books that I've read this year. Uh, but I did read this one, uh, didn't talk about it, but I love it. Legacy of Ashes, The History of the CIA. Two James Baldwin books, If Bill Street Could Talk and Go Tell It on the Mountain. I absolutely adore If Bill Street Could Talk with my entire heart, and I really, really love Go Tell It on the Mountain. But I bought this other book by James Baldwin called... Uh, just above my head, which I talked about in my recent video, and I'm super excited about kind of rereading all his stuff because he's just the most interesting author to me of the past, like, 200 years, uh, and I'm really, really excited to more, learn more about him, honestly, because he's a really, really compelling dude, and I think his perspective of being a gay black man in the early 20th century is just something that everybody should read about. The Collected Stories of William Faulkner, Dr. Zivago by Boris Pasternak, Pasternak, I think is how you say it. Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. Willa Cather's The Professor House, another book that I read this year that I'll probably be talking about when I talk about women's literature in the next video or two. Then we have Virginia Woolf's To the Lighthouse. Then we have Andre Asimov's Call Me By Your Name, but I also have two other books by Andre Asimov, a bunch of other books by him. Um, this book called Out of Egypt is Memoir Collection. I also then have his book Enigma Variations here, which I talk about all in recent videos, and you should definitely go check those videos out. But I love Andre Asimov. He's one of my favorite contemporary authors out there. He's actually one of the few contemporary authors that I actually end up reading and really, really loving too. Which isn't to say that there isn't more contemporary authors, but just out of the ones that I read. We have Clarice Lispector's The Hour of the Star. Sula by Toni Morrison. A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. A book that I got a few years ago. It was the winner of the Man Booker Prize, and I never got a chance to read it, but I am still really curious about it. Shusaku Endo's Silence, a book that was turned into a movie uh, directed by Martin Scorsese of the same name. The movie's beautiful, and I want to check out the book, and apparently the book is even more beautiful. So it's really a shame that I've been a fool and have not read it yet. Ernest Hemingway's from whom the bell tolls. Clockwork Orange, Anthony Burgess. Just to show you real quick, I know we're almost at an hour, probably getting up there in terms of video length. Uh, thank you guys for sticking with me so long. Uh, I'm really old. I'm almost 24, which is basically old man times. Uh, but my back is already hurting from seeing this position. So just to give you a heads up about the, the lengths I put my body through for you guys. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson. A beautiful, horrific mind fuck of a book, and I loved every second of it. Miko Kawakami, Breasts and Eggs, a book that I had a lot of really interesting thoughts on. I think I liked it a lot, uh, but there is definitely some parts where I was not as sold on it. Uh, but it's a book that I definitely want to talk about probably closer to the end of the year when I talk about the books that I read this year. Then we have the Makioko Sisters. Makioko, I think is how you say it. Makioka. Makioka Sisters uh, by Junchiro Tan Tanazaki. Then we have Snow Country by Yasunura Kawabata. Kawabata, I think is how you say it. Uh, the winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, which just makes this like, a, ooh, wait, I got to read that kind of book. Uh, so I'm kind of super excited for that. Then we have Thomas Pynchon's V, a book I'll 100% be talking about at the end of the year for the best books that I read this year. I read this as my first book in 2022, and it still kind of sticks with me a lot. Then we have another book from the person who wrote the Makioka Sisters, uh, Semper for Nettles, which is a really interesting title uh, that I'm kind of curious to check it out. Then we have Alif Batuman's uh, The Idiot, a book that I read recently. I'm not really big into contemporary literature just yet, but I really, really was intrigued in it. And it's something that I think I, I kind of might reread uh in like a year or two uh, just because i found it really compelling and also it's because she also has a book 
um, called Either Or that just came out, which is the title taken from Kierkegaard, I think is who it is. So clearly she's a formidable writer uh, who we should be on the lookout for probably over the next few years and see what else she makes. But I'm really excited about kind of rereading this and then tackling Either Or. Then we have Yukio Mishima's After the Banquet. We have Willa Cather's A Lost Lady, one of the most important books to me. If you want to go check out more about this, go look at the video that I made on it. Then we have Willa Cather, Death Comes for the Archbishop. And the reason I just said that so slow is because I've messed up on the name like six times already. Yukio Mishima's Confessions of a Mask, a beautiful, beautiful hunting book that I would recommend to anybody curious in Japanese literature. Seriously, I really would. Then I have Yukio Mishima's Spring Snow, which is the only book this year that I did not finish because uh, I was not interested in it. I really didn't like the direction that it was going, but it's part of a tetralogy, so it's four books in a series, uh, and I kind of need to read it because I love Yukio Mishima. But this might be the one book or series from him I'm just not into. Who knows? I think I'll give it another chance, though. I really want to show you guys the mess of books over here when it's all done. You guys might hate me for it, uh, but I really just threw every book into a pile over here. Uh, it's really horrific and honestly kind of a hate crime against books. So uh, I'm so sorry. I, I really am. Please don't hate me. We have Beloved by Toni Morrison. Uh, J.M. Coetzee's uh, Waiting for the Barbarians, a book that I read in college and adored. To the Kingdom of This World by Alio Carpentier. And then The Sailor Who Fell from Grace, a book that I read this year that I talked about in my I Try to Read All the Books on My Bookshelf video. Okay, wow. We're at technically the final bookshelf. I'm going to fucking haul ass through this 0 to 60 in 0 0.05 seconds. We got this. Ready? George Eliot's The Mill and the Floss. Anthony Trollope, The American Senator. Wilkie Collins, The Woman in White. W.M. Thackeray, Barry Lyndon, the book that uh, inspired Stanley Kubrick's movie by the same name, Barry Lyndon. Jane Austen's Teenage Writing. So writings that she had when she was a teenager. And I think it's really, really interesting. All right, now we're down to my Haruki Murakami collection. The first thing that we have is this really cool edition of 1Q84, which breaks it down into its initial publication of like all three books. Uh, but then I also have the big American like publication of him as well. Uh, so I love 1Q84. It's a book that I've only read once, but the more I think about it, the more it's grown on me. I plan on making like a Haruki Murakami tier list video so you guys can kind of see my understanding of what I think about his books. But hot take, he's my favorite author and hot take, he's not a good person. I think those things are kind of mucho exclusive. Um, and I made an entire video about it. So if you haven't already, go check that one out. All right, you guys ready for this Haruki Murakami collection? Let's do this. Boom, look at all these books. Wow, this is so dramatic. I could have edited this in a more cool way, but... I kind of was super anxious about making this video when I kind of had a panic attack yesterday. So when you saw that continuity shift uh, between the two like skits I had at the beginning, ah, and uh, this what I'm doing right now, it's because after I shot those two things, I had a, a pretty like anxiety attack about recording this video. Uh, so I did not want to. Uh, what's it? I did not want to record that day, which is now why you find me uh, doing this now. Uh, thank you for the ramble. <laughs> uh, wait, why is it so dirty? There's a little kid crying in the apartment building next to me. Uh, we have Norwegian Wood. What I talk about when I talk about running. The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Sputnik Sweetheart. The Elephant Vanishes. Color Suku Tazaki and his Years of Pilgrimage. Hear the Wind Sing and Pinball 1973. I fucking hate this copy of this book. I'm not gonna lie. I think these gimmick upside down books are such bullshit. I'm gonna throw that out there. That's the meanest I'll ever be on this channel. Uh, Haruki Murakami's Dance Dance Dance. Haruki Murakami, a wild sheep chase. I don't know why I keep seeing his name. I kind of zoned out there for a second. My bad. Uh, as you can see, uh, recording an hour plus video is making me slowly lose my sanity. I'm so hot and I'm so, my back is so uncomfortable. Uh, but yeah, South of the Border, West of the Sun. This is one of my like high key underrated books from him. Uh, I think everybody should read it if you're a fan of his, but not a lot of people do. It's kind of interesting. Uh, Underground, After Dark, his newest release, First Person Singular, which I have not read yet, which is a shame considering he's my favorite author. So that's a must read soon. Kafka on the Shore in Hard Boiled Wonderland at the End of the World. And if you know anything about my channel name, uh, you would have probably recognized that my channel name is in his collection of books right here. So just throwing that out there for you guys. There is my Haruki Murakami collection. We are so close to being done, guys. Holy shit, this is amazing. Uh, we have F. Scott Fitzgerald, Flappers and Philosophers. Virginia Woolf, A Room of One's Own, a book that I will be reading soon. And we also have Virginia Woolf, The Waves. Uh, but I will be reading uh, A Room of One's Own very soon for this upcoming women's literature video because I think it's very important. And also, uh, Olive and Mark both heavily are like, you're a fucking idiot for not having read this. And I'm like, I know, I really should. F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Beautiful and the Dam. Willa Cather, My Antonia. Willa Cather, one of ours. Henrik Ibsen, The Complete Major Prose Plays. And the reason I bought this is because this was literally $5.
all of his works was five dollars and to me that's just like highway robbery then we have this book uh the crisis of conscience by tom mueller i was talking books how rude uh, I've read like half of this book so far and I kind of didn't really want to finish it. I mean, it was a really cool like analyzing stories of how like whistleblowing is kind of impacting people and impacting not only like the the people who are committed to fraud, uh, who believe that a company is doing bad things, but those around it and these nice, beautiful stories that I, I think I, I wish kind of had a more clear and concise point to them because they're really long and at a certain point I kind of just lost interest in it, but it is still a really good book. I don't want to like crap on it or sound like I'm crapping on it too much. F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby. My claim to fame uh, teaching last year was that my students had a prom uh, centered around Great Gatsby and they all seem to love this book. So whether or not I had a direct influence on it, who knows? But for my own ego and my own sense of self-worth, I will say that I am the reason they had a Great Gatsby theme prom uh, because they loved me and they loved my book so much. Not my book, the way they loved the way I taught that book so much. Thomas Pinchon's Mason and Dixon. Hana Yanagihara's A Little Life, a book that I've read twice now in my life, which is really interesting because it's like 800 pages. And honestly, I kind of want to read it again. I really love this book. I'm not going to lie. It's grown on me substantially. I have issues with it. Specifically, Willem's character has always been a big standout to me because something I wish would have been developed more. Uh, but I have a lot of thoughts about this. I made a video about it that I don't really like. Uh, and maybe one day I'll kind of redo it or talk about like book opinions I got wrong um, kind of thing. So we'll talk about that another time, I bet. On Books by Alan Ryan. On Books. On Politics by Alan Ryan. <laughs> oh man, I'm losing my mind. Mythology by Edith Hamilton. We have The Aeneid by Virgil. Virgil by Virgil. We have The Odyssey by Homer. Oh my God, this is it. The final two books. Ah, I'm so excited. Uh, we have Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I, I understand why people like this Barnes & Noble Classics edition, but I really don't like it that much, I gotta be honest. And then, last but not least, we have All of Human Bondage by W. Somerset Moham. And you might be wondering, Tyler, what are these books behind you over here? They're not mine, they're olives that I thought were interesting, so I stole them from her and put them on my own bookshelf. Uh, but since they're technically not my books, I will... Uh, I will not be including them in this collection video, but there are a lot of Brett Easton Ellis books and the Brat Pack because she loves those kind of authors in that time period. This has been technically probably my longest video I'll ever make on this channel. It is over 60 minutes long by this point of my recording. I'm very tired. I have gone through and sweat through an entire sweatshirt. Uh, and then the result of that continuity issues at the beginning, we had a wonderful journey where I discovered I have two copies of Dom Casmuro. Uh, books fell, hearts were broken, lives were lost. And I would say... This is a pretty wild video that I do not want to have to make again. Um, the more I buy books, the less interested I'm making a bookshelf tour video, because as you can see, uh, this is just absurd. I own so many books. I'll show you guys this in a minute. But yeah, I think this technically brings us to the end of this video now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did, if you have any book recommendations for me, or if you saw anything that you wanted me to either let you know or tell it the author or recommend or anything, do please don't hesitate. Like I, I like hearing your comments. I like seeing your Instagram messages. So you can go follow me on there if you want. Uh, you can send me an email, anything. I, I read every single thing that I get. I, I, I must admit, sometimes I fail to respond to everything and I'm so sorry about that. I, I really do try as much as I can uh, given just how limited time I have during the day. But I, I, I wanna try to get to everything. I, I really am. I'm, I'm making my way through them. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, go check out Matt's Bookshelf and Drunzo. Their channels are amazing. Uh, I'm really tired. I'm going to go take a nap in my pile of books. Uh, it will be the most uncomfortable nap that I'll ever take in my life, but I'm hoping through like photosynthesis, which I know is not the word for it, uh, but I kind of just metasize and just, I don't think that's a word either. I just collectively gain all the information that I have on these books if I just sleep on them, because I don't think that's how plants work. I know they just get nutrients from the sun and now i'm rambling at a really terrible joke but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video there'll be more content coming out probably in the next 10 to 14 days after this one because uh, i'm going on vacation with olive so i'll be gone for a few days uh, but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you again soon